So we're working on this crate. The other special, so we're going to be doing some stenciling on the front. Well, it's not stenciling, but we're transferring a graphic on the front. Um, we are going to have a giveaway. As always on Home Talk, we are going to be giving away a Home Talk DIY tote bag. So that's exciting, and Home Talk will be putting a giveaway question at the top of the feed there. So make sure you uh, take note of that and answer the questions, and you could win a Home Talk DIY tote bag. So let's get started on the project. We are going to be using some napkins. And if you've never done napkin decoupage before, this is such a fun thing to really brighten up and give a shabby chic look to any piece of furniture. You can use it on drawers or whatever. So I've got a lovely range of napkins here to choose from. And you can get these from, you know, you can get them online or you can get them at your uh, local craft supply place or even your, you know, kitchenware place. Today I'm going to use this bright floral one here. So move these out of the way. We've got people tuning in yet, Shireen, telling us where they're from. Mostly so far from the States. Wow. Mary, New York, Texas, Maine. I don't even know where Maine is. Good um, evening, America. So we're hoping for some people from other parts of the world soon too. Yeah. Okay. So with our napkin, you might want to have a look over here. We've got uh, this, is, this napkin. In your napkins styles, we'll have lots of different plies. Most of them are the two or three ply napkins, and it should say... Um, on the back. This one's a three ply. So what we want to do with our napkin is just get the top ply of your napkin. So if you're pulling away and you see that this side is very thin and this side is a little bit thicker, then we'll need to try and get that other piece away, the other ply. So you can divide it into three ply. I can grab that corner there. There you go. So see how it's tearing away there? You kind of want to be a little bit gentle with it. <clears throat> but we're tearing away that top layer of the napkin. And what it's done is they've embossed the edges together on this one. So it kind of sticks well together as a napkin and serves its purpose. But once that top layer has been pulled away gently without tearing, um, you have the design. And now without with your napkin designs, sometimes just be careful with some of them. There's some fun designs here, um, but there was one here I'm thinking of. See this party one? You could even make this a party box for a kid's party table decoration or something like that. Um, but with the designs, often they will have a, a design going one way and then the lower half will go the opposite way. So if you have the napkin folded, you'll see the designs that way and upright this way and upright that way. So when you open it up, You've just got to be careful that your design kind of looks like it's an overall design. It's not going upside down. Or maybe if it had words, it might do that too. So the first thing we're going to be doing, and I'll just use a different box here that I've half started, is we're going to be transferring using some decoupage medium. Now you can use anything you like, Mod Podge or any of the other decoupage mediums. Today I'm using Fusion's Transfer Gel. <coughs> And our giveaway question is, Shireen's helping me today. Aren't you, Shireen? I am. I am. <laughs> You're awesome. Our giveaway question is, what would you stencil onto your crate? And I'd love to know what you would use yours for. Um, Easter's coming up. Got any ideas there? We've got um, spring in the, in the northern hemisphere and autumn over here. What kind of decor ideas would you have for your crate? So we're grabbing a bit of decoupage medium here, and we are going to be layering it on fairly thick because we want it to stick well but we don't want to have lumps or anything so we smooth out all of those lumps and we work fairly quickly because we don't want this to all dry. It does dry clear and as you can see it's a bit of a milky look at the moment as with most decoupage kind of things. There we go. Nice and smooth. Across the handle, we've got a handle there. Um, until it's covered entirely without, you know, it's fairly even along the surface. So once it's in completely um, covered, 
I'll just move on the side here. We're going to lay our napkin over the top really carefully. I'm going to centre it, but I'm going to make the bottom uh, go right to the bottom edge. But you could do it however you like. Now the other thing that you need to have on hand, which would be good to have on hand, is a credit card or a store card just to smooth out any lumps. But I'm just going to use my hand for a minute here and see if, how I do with my fingers. Yep, we're getting some wrinkles there, but that's all right because it's all a part of the part of the shabby look. But you can see I'm just gently smoothing out any wrinkles. Okay, so we've got a whole big wrinkly area here. You could try and lift it if you like and just layer it down a little bit. While it's still wet, we can work with it just a bit. See if we can stretch it out a bit further. But as we go, there we go, those wrinkles are going to be smoothed out just a little bit more. So make sure you get right over the edges and um, once you've used your card to smooth out wrinkles, use your fingers to just get it as smooth as you can. So if we've got any feedback on those ideas yet, Shireen, for that giveaway question. So many ideas. I'm, I'm just... I got stuck reading them all. Um, <laughs> it's like I forgot You're enjoying yourself were. too much over there. Tell us about them. Um, there, there's so many. Um, someone said they'd put a, uh, st um, put a photo of their grandkids on it. Oh, great um, idea. And have it for their toys for when they came over to visit. Yes. Quite a few people saying they'd put paw prints on it. Oh, use yep. it for dog toys. Oh, excellent idea. Um, someone else said they'd have a wedding date with the bride and groom's name on it, just for little knickknacks for the wedding day. And then oh, that's a beautiful idea. Goods. You know what you could do with that is make it like a wishing well kind of yes. idea as well for a wedding. Um, that's a beautiful idea. Mm, great. I'm loving Very those ideas. ideas. Um, so when, just let me tell you too, when you're putting it on and you're going right to the edges here, what I've done is you run your finger along the edge just to make sure that edge is really... You can even sort of see some of the napkin tearing away. But we let it dry so that the napkin, oops, and it will tear. So just be really gentle because you know this is paper thin, thinner than paper, <laughs> thinner than paper thin. It's napkin thin, people, that's what it is. So I'm just rubbing my fingers along the edge here to give a really sharp edge because when that dries, we're going to sand that off and I'll show you that in just a minute. And here is one that I've prepared earlier with the same floral design. How do you like that? So this is actually all dried because I did this yesterday. So the best idea is to sort of let it dry overnight. Let me show you one thing on this, on this wet piece here. The other thing you can do is while it's wet, just poke a hole in that handle there. And we will remove all that when it's finished. But um, I'll just show you with this top edge Rubbing my fingers along here, this is one way you can start to remove that napkin on the top, is just tear that away there like that. Because it's actually stuck to the edge and that will come away. Then when it's dry, I'll show you what we do on the other side. This is my dry side, completely dry, so leave it dry at least a couple of hours or overnight if you can. Just got a, a bit of um, excess here, so I'll just wipe that away because you don't want excess bits, that's the more you have to sand when you're finished. All right, here's the dry side. So what I'm going to do, once that's finished, we can wash that out. This is water soluble, so just wash brushes. The brush washes out in water quite easily. Now I'm just going to use a, this is an 80 grit, but you can use really any grit sandpaper, just not a really high fine grit because you want some to come off. Um, so with your sandpaper, you're going to just go along those edges there. And as you can see, it's all just wearing off. Here we go, we'll do it on this side. This is the flap of um, napkin on the edge. A really quick sand on the edge and it just comes away. So the other thing you can do is just give it a little bit more. So this is the side where I already uh, removed the napkin. You can just give it a little bit more of a sand in areas that might, if you want to give it more of a distressed look. So, for example, along these edges, I might just want to go a little bit more along there or on the corners, giving a little bit of distress on those areas. So here we have the handle. And I'm just going to rub the sandpaper inside. These are my sandy hand sanding gloves. I love them. They're so good for... Um, 
sanding furniture and all kinds of things. Only available in Australia at the moment, I think. Oh, and UK, Europe. Europe definitely has these two. Awesome. Okay, so we've sanded inside there. And just around a little bit of the edges too. Now what you can do after that is seal that decoupage in with some more decoupage medium. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. But I just want to sand a little bit more on this to distress those edges. The other thing I'm going to do is along these, uh, what do you call it, joins, is just give a little bit more of a distress along there so that you can actually see those joins being defined. And to do that, we may just have to grab another little piece of sandpaper that I'm going to fold and see if I can either use it. Oh, here we go. That's a great use for the store card as well, um, is to get into those grooves just like that. Okay, so see how we're defining those grooves now there. You got any more ideas for people's crates there, Shireen? Uh, yes. It's going to sand more in here. One I really loved at the moment mm -hmm. was um, welcome guests. They put um, have a little welcome basket for the guests for when they stay. Wow, um, lovely idea. I want to come stay at that person's yes. house. <laughs> so I'm thinking if I'm getting a whole crate, I'm going to stay there. Yeah. Uh, someone else said that they would do something with uh, knitting on the front of it to keep all of their knitting in. Oh, great idea, yes. Someone else suggested even um, transferring wine labels onto it, keeping it as a, a wine box or other yep. kind of household. Lovely. Tip. Um, Mum's recipes. Mum's oh, yeah. Recipes, keep it as a recipe book. Yep. Um, hold on. Some yep. really good ideas there. Um, and I, I need to ask you, Sharon, yes? about a thousand questions of where can we get the gloves? Yeah, I just thought I'd mention that too because I know people always ask when I use them. They're available in Australia and um, UK and Europe. I don't think they are able to sell them in the USA and Canada at the moment. So. Great invention, and actually, um, a fun fact is my auntie actually invented these sandy hand sanding gloves. Big shout out to my auntie Jenny, she's awesome. She was one of my inspirations for actually starting the whole furniture recycling and upcycling bizzo. So look at that, see how we've defined uh, those edges in there. So then what we can do is, and I've already washed off my, half washed off, so it's gonna be a little bit watery, um, but what I'm going to do is just go over the top now with the decoupage medium again, just use a paper towel and wipe that brush a bit. Take the moisture out because I dunked it in the water ready to wash it off when I wasn't really finished. So we're going to just smooth this over the top of here and that will seal your whole project in once you're all ready. Now you know what you could also do with this is add an antiquing glaze if you wanted to. And the other thing I'll mention is just remember that, so this napkin originally, let me show you the original napkin if I can get one out here is white and remember that the two plies behind this, if you've just joined us, we separated this three ply napkin and peeled off the top layer to make this decoupage. So um, that white will be see-through because it's the top layer. So whatever you paint underneath, so if I had painted this box a different color, if I'd painted it white, you would see more white coming through. If I'd painted it red, it would see, you'd see more red. You know, whatever color you have the box, is what's going to actually sort of show through in the end. Now don't panic because this is showing up milky white because it will dry clear. You can either use the decoupage medium or you can use something like a wipe-on poly, a polyurethane varnish to go over the top and just hold in, make sure it's all sealed. Um, and it will dry really nicely. It's all dry. The Loving that shabby chic look. So there's so many lovely napkin ideas and some of those ideas you've been saying. So like for example that wedding idea. You could use wedding. There's so many beautiful wedding napkins. Imagine that. Napkins on the side. It'd be gorgeous. Sharon, someone's yeah. asked, um, would this work the same with fabric? Uh, yes, you can use fabric um, and it would be the same kind of process. You won't get that see-through look. You won't be able to sand it back. So there are differences. But yeah, experiment. I'd love to hear some of your experimenting ideas. That's great. Um, great idea to use fabric. You could use 
all sorts of things, even ordinary paper like wrapping paper, things like that. Um, but just with the napkins, I love the way that they give that shabby kind of effect on the sides. Now, this one is still drying, obviously, because we've only just put that on. So I'm not going to, I could probably actually sand away these edges a little bit just so that we don't have those flaps hanging around. <coughs> but what I'm going to work on next is the wording on the side. So remember the giveaway question is what would you stencil onto your box? And I'd love to know what you would use it for. So sort of two questions in one. And we're going to pick a winner at the end to win a Home Talk tote bag. All right, so we'll just let that dry a little bit more. So our sign on the side. Now there's um, a couple of things. One thing, the, before I do the sign, now I didn't do this for my, if you've seen my Home Talk blog post, I had just put this, the sign directly on top of here. What I want to do today is show you another thing that you can do before you put your sign on, is if you have a plain wood surface like that, now this one's been stained, um, a really popular thing at the moment is that farmhouse barn board whitewashy kind of look. So I want to just show you a little bit of how we can do that, just with a little bit of dry brushing. And dry brushing is really easy. So you're getting to learn a few different techniques today, all in one DIY. And you may or may not have seen these before, but you know what? I learn something new every time I watch someone, even if I've done it before. So hopefully you're getting something out of this today. Give us a shout out where you're from. I'm going to just get my brush and dry off as much paint as I can. I'm just using a white. And what we're going to do is just dry brush the edges. So see there's hardly anything on my paintbrush. And less is more because if you can always put more on but you can't really take it off once it's there. It's kind of a bit of a hassle if you have to do that. Just saying. So I'm dipping the paintbrush in, drying the bristles off and just doing a light whitewash over the top of that. So how's that going? Got any more questions there, Shireen? Or any more someone suggested giveaway ideas? I mean, yeah, ideas. Yeah, someone's wondered about using newspaper. Do you think that would work? Well, there you go. Give a, a different kind of a look? I, I would say it would work. Um, the only thing I would be careful of is when you're doing it, the newspaper print is usually printed on both sides. And so if you've got the thing that you want on the outside, you're going to actually see through it and see through to the other side. So I'm not sure if it would work, but you know what? I always say use a sample board and have a go, experiment, uh, give it a go first on something that is not so precious. So don't don't go and try it on your favourite dresser that you want to decoupage in newspaper. Go try it on a sample board first and you can get off cuts from your hardware store. Um, so we've just got a light white brushing on top of that. Is it just a, a white, Sharon? A couple of people asking yep. what kind of colour you're using. I'm just using Fusion's Picket Fence, which is one of their brighter whites in their paint range. Well, there you go. I've just done a great big... <laughs> didn't dry it off as much as I have the others the other dips. So now I'm going to have to even that up a bit. What do you reckon? There is no such thing as mistakes though, is there, is there Shari? No mistakes. No, mistakes. no we always just um, make up like we totally intended to do that. Who's ever done that before? I'm sure plenty. Give me some, send me some hearts or send me some love if you've done that before. All right, see, so we just add, add to it. The other thing you can do is just sand a little bit later if it's if it's really stressing your um, need to be completely perfect. A couple of people wondering too, could you use a rag and wipe it off? Yes, you could. And so I could, um, I've got a, a paper towel here. It's actually dried so quickly that I can't do that right now. But uh, just a little touch of sandpaper would actually be able to take it back a bit. But, you know... Imperfections is what it's all about, I say. So there you go. We've just kind of whitewashed that whole look on the front there. And we could do the same to the other side. So now we're going to work on the words that I want to put on the front. Let me just rid myself of some lovely napkins here. <coughs> 
and get my things ready. So what we want to do on the front for the words is we're going to be using some graphite paper or carbon paper as we call it here in Australia. I don't know, what do you call it where you're from? Graphite paper, carbon paper, let me know in the comments because there's lots of different ways of doing and saying these words in different countries all over the world. Okay, so I'll leave that side for now. We will do it on this side because it's pretty much dry straight away. What I've done is I've just printed out some words. I'm going to use the words fresh flowers, fresh flowers, 50 cents. So what I want to do is you don't necessarily have to put the words exactly like they are on here. You can move fresh to be over here like this. You can put flowers down here. You can cut it out if that helps you. I'm just going to do it just like this. <clears throat> Putting it this way so you can see it. <clears throat> now, carbon or graphite paper, if you don't know what it is, it's just, you know, what did you used to use it for in the olden days? That's showing my age. Um, used to use it for invoices and receipts, and it's that piece of, you know, paper that you can actually make copies of things with. It seems Any the majority questions? of people are calling Call it carbon paper. Oh, so. thank you. Yes. Okay, so I've got a line going across here, so I'm going to put the word flowers in the centre of that line, then I'll do the word fresh like this and maybe 50 cents like this. So all we're going to do is line it up as best you can to the centre of the box and if you're really particular, you could use a um, ruler. However, I'm not going to be particular today. Now, if you wanted to, you could actually trace around the entire width of the whole in all the letters, but today I'm just going to, I want to have a bit more of a freehand paintbrush brushed look, see how steady my hand can get with millions of people watching. All right, and I'm just going to go in the centre of all of the letters. So I'm not going to be particularly fussy about where the edges of the letters are. I just want to get the roundabout feel so that when I go over it with my paintbrush, I'm just going to have a, a handwritten look. Okay, we want to hear your ideas for the giveaway question, which was what would you put on your crate or box and what would you use it for? And Isn't Home Talk's going to pick a winner at the end to win a Home Talk tote bag. Here's another couple of really good ideas, Sharon. Yep. Someone has mentioned putting some sheet music on it. Oh, yeah. To keep musical instruments or even yes. ones for children. Or I like that idea. Sheet music in. Beautiful. Someone else suggested an <coughs> Easter bunny. You of could course. Put a little Easter bunny on the front. Yes. Coming up to Easter. And there's kids. probably Easter napkins as well mm. that would, would probably be beautiful for that. And then you could Someone bring it out else every has season. Of, um, some, uh, putting a, say, class of 2017 on oh, it. Oh, brilliant. Keeping keepsakes for their children graduating. Yes. Brilliant idea. Uh, starfishes and seahorses for like a bathroom kind of a, a feel. Yeah. Keep it as a storage thing for a bathroom. Um, and what was the other one? Oh, yes, a baby bundle. Have oh, perfect. Baby, have it in blue or pink, depending yep. on the, the sex of the baby, and yep. give it as a gift to whoever's having the baby. Beautiful that idea. Really sweet idea. That would be great for a baby shower. Yes. Really Even as a, um, for, you know, some of these things like baby shower, bridal shower, it can be used yes. as a great centrepiece for um, your um, food table or something. So I've got the word fresh here, flowers across here, and I'll just put 50 cents up on my um, imperfect area up here that we're just not even going to call a mistake. Let's see, we go this way, shall we? Let's make sure I haven't run into the word flowers there. 50 cents, that's pretty good for flowers these days. <coughs> Imagine this filled with flowers. Imagine a crate just filled with beautiful tulips or... What's your favourite flower? Write that in the comments. Does anyone have a favourite? What's your favourite flower, showering? Do you have one? Um, always roses. Roses, always roses, roses. Classic roses. There we go. We've printed the words just using them from a printed ordinary sheet of paper that you print out from your printer. Now we're going to go over these letters. Now one of the ways you can do it is with paint and the other way is with a sharpie. So I'll just show you this part here with a sharpie. Just for, um, a, to show you the two different things. So I'm just going to go over the letters. Now 
And for this one, I think, feel like I need to be, I feel like it's hard upside down. So what I'm going to do is just fill that out a little bit more, copying the letters that I've got down here on the page. And like I said before, if you wanted to, you could actually trace around the, all those letters to make it a bit easier for you. So we're just fattening out the letters there. I'm loving hearing your ideas. What are people's favourite flowers? Have you got any answers there? Some of them that I haven't even heard of. Um, really? But some lilacs, yep. sunflowers, lots and lots of roses, my favourite. Roses. Um, lots of peonies. Oh, I think that's how oh, you peon say. Peonies, peonies or peonies. peonies. Yep. Carnations, hydrangeas, tulips. I love tulips too. They're yeah, I love tulips too. And sweet peas. I'm not, I've never heard of that before. There we go. Um, orchids. And Beautiful. a cabbage rose. I don't know what a cabbage rose is, but there you Ooh. go. I'm getting an education. You in are. Cabbage. We're going to have to Google those later. Guys, I forgot to tell you, if you want to share this Home Talk live, you can do so any time during, sh during the live, and it will just shoot you straight back. You won't miss out on a thing. So there's a little share button there. If you want to hit the share button, you can share it with your friends or your DIY um, peeps any time. Share the love, share the expertise. There we go. So I'm just kind of filling those letters out with the Sharpie. <clears throat> and um, Home Talk's already probably put that on there, but there's a link to my Home Talk profile where I've actually done this tutorial and you can look it up later. And you know that if you've missed out anything on this live today, you can always play it back after it's finished it will always show the replay. So post it, post the live as soon as it's finished. I can still hear the winds howling out there. If you missed the very beginning of our show, I was just explaining how in southeast Queensland, here in Australia, we've just had Cyclone Debbie, who's just wreaked havoc down the coast of Queensland, it is now moving into New South Wales. So big shout out to my fellow Australians who are weathering the storms out there right now. Stay dry and stay out of the floodwaters. That's my tip for the day. Whoa, there we go. So we've got a Sharpie for this part. The other, um, the word flowers, I am going to use a fine paintbrush and just have a go at doing this freehand. So I'm just using a black. You can use any colour you like. You could even find a colour that might match with your decoupage here. So I'm just going to tip it into the lid because that always has plenty of paint in it when we've um, stirred it or shaken it a little bit. I might need a cloth. Got a bit too much on my brush. Oh, okay. Here we go. I'm printing upside down and shaking at the same time. But it's going to have a very hand-drawn look and that's what we like. Sharon, someone's yeah. just asked, um, what about paint pens? Would they be suitable as well? Yeah, you can use paint, paint pens. pens. Yep, absolutely. <coughs> Usually the best thing to use is anything that's water-based, only because you're using it on a water-based paint um, or medium. So, But, yep, I'm sure the paint pens would work well. Like I said, experiment and... This is kind of tricky working upside down. I'm going to just move around a little bit, sorry. Oh yeah, it's looking really freehand. Feeling so much not the artist, but you know, it's all about the imperfections. <clears throat> we got any more ideas there for the giveaway? Giveaway question is, what would you put, what would you stencil on the side of your crate and what would you use it for? Someone's actually had the idea since you've been doing fresh flowers. Yes. They thought they could put a flowers or some kind of flower decoration on the outside and put a little um, pot plant in it. Oh, beautiful so keep idea. It as an actual pot plant yeah. to decorate the outside. So yep. I thought that was a really good idea. That's a great idea. Um, some of the other ones have been uh, people said they would put inspirational words on it and use it for their hobbies that oh, they yeah. enjoy. 
um, Great idea. Know, just to keep themselves motivated yep. for their hobby. Um, knitting. Um, I so like that knitting idea because mm -hmm. you know that if you've got your wool you can poke it through these handles you know oh, and just kind of string idea. it through because that'll stop it get un, you know, getting unravelled. I'm not the expert knitter but you know I just had that thought there, massive brain wave, that that would make a great little place to post your wool through. It would. My, my daughter does crocheting and I've just yes. immediately thought that I could tidy up her whole crocheting area with yeah. a little crate and you could. put something cute on the outside of it for her. So that's a really good idea, Sharon. I like that. There we go. How are we going? Look at that. It looks very hand painted, the word flowers, but that's kind of the look we're going for. I'm really loving that barn board look. Here's one. That I'll just show you another one that I did. Um, this is the one that I actually did for my home talk blog post, which was the, um, the giveaway. So there it is without the whitewash on it. And here, so this is the one I did on the blog post and this is the other napkin that I did. So this is a different shabby napkin, some, one that I ha some that I had on hand. So you can see we've distressed all in those little grooves there. If you missed the first part where we did the napkin, you'll be able to rewind as soon as we finished. <coughs> And this one is looking great. I think I prefer the one, what do you think guys? Just let me know in the comments. I prefer the, the whitewashy look, but you might prefer something different. Um, yeah, so that is awesome. So our job is nearly done and it's time to pick a winner. And the Home Talk girls will be right onto that. Pick a winner out of all those wonderful comments. I've just seen so many awesome ideas out there. Uh, I'm just gonna grab my little piece of sandpaper while that winner is being picked. And we're going to sand off the rest of this handle in here. It's dried off quite well. And if you've missed the first part, we can rewind it on the live. Woo. So remember we distressed quite a bit of this and I can actually run the card through here, just a store card or a credit card, to get those grooves really accentuated. Maybe the crate that you're working on doesn't have these grooves, but I think it really is kind of cool. Looks very crate-like. And this one's still drying a little bit, so we might need a little bit more dry time before we actually finish it. I think we're getting an equal amount of people who like both styles. Do they? Yep. Definitely put in the middle there. <laughs> now they've announced the winner too, Sharon. Have we? We've got a winner. Guys, well there's our finished project and there's a couple of different looks you can get. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget to click on the share button, like and subscribe to Home Talks. Um, DIY lives because you'll get to see another one. I think it's tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST. But Shireen, tell us who is the winner? The winner today is Linda Gormley. I hope I've said your second name correctly. Congratulations, Linda. And her idea was to put on the front of it, go jump in the lake. <laughs> because she Lovely. lives near a lake. Awesome and she idea. Would keep towels and flip flops oh, and things for the lake. So such a great, a great idea. 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 That is so funny. I love it. Good job, Linda, and congratulations. You have won your own DIY home talk tote bag. I'm Sharon, and I blog over at i restorestuff.com. Thank you so much for watching today, and I will see you next time that we do a home talk live. Bye.